and continuing onward from the last episode, whilst we were on top of Chilela Pass, taking in the views and getting ready to go downhill, we witnessed a bunch of uh, cyclists and one of them had his helmet on the wrong way. So like good Samaritans, we went and we saved his life by telling him that he had his helmet on the wrong way. And continuing onward, now it was three of us going downhill, Aditya, Gaurav and myself. And yes, there's a story to this also. And now comes the best part. So, uh, there's no other way to say this, but uh, to show you mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> to show you that when you're going downhill, once let let Gaurav explain it to you. What happened, Gaurav? I was going downhill, enjoying it. And we have like just a few kilometers left, but uh, there was a small stone, not small, like this bigger stone in the middle of the road and it was in the shadow so I didn't see it and I hit it and my bike flipped and, and luckily... Uh, the, what happened? Yeah. Shred. The pedals have taken a beating. The seat is definitely shredded. I just want to check what's inside, so that's the reason why I did this. Okay. And uh, uh, well, you can see that the... But still not too bad for a flip. Not too bad at all. Gora fell bad, huh? Gora fell really bad. Where? He put the, I helped him put the bike in the... <laughs> Victory beer, this apple cider. It's a red rice lager. Uh, lager. Red rice, red rice lager. Yeah. So that's made in Bhutan, right? Okay. Made in Bhutan. Cheers, man. You did it. Did you bleed? No, no. And Gaurav is making his way out of the bed. My first steps. <laughs> oh, and he's doing a yoga pose before he starts. Woo! Oh, shit, Sean in the house. So, the next morning, we had a really heavy breakfast. We were very tired from the day prior. And I have to say, La Meridian has one of the best buffets, whether it is breakfast or dinner. And I really love this place also because the property sits right next to a river and they allow you to go next to the river and chill if you want to. So that's exactly what we did. We went to the riverfront and we took a couple of pictures, relaxed for a bit before we made our way to Thimpu. So we are at uh, Le Meridian Paro. Uh, the riverfront property and uh, I don't know if you can hear it but we have like a huge huge and really um, powerful powerful river that's passing through the property and right next to it and uh, it's a beautiful day today the sun's out it feels nice you get some warmth into the body and the hospitality has been really you know on point and we really appreciate all the you know the warm bed and the, the good food that we have every night actually thank you to Randall because uh 
one of the coolest GMs that we met yesterday. Uh, in general, this place is just beautiful. The staff is extremely courteous, humble, always willing to help, always going that extra step, you know, the mile to please you and, and basically provide you whatever service you need. Uh, this is definitely one of the must uh, visit places when you're in, in, in Paro. Uh, from here now we're going to cycle all the way to Thimpu and we're going to check into Le Meridi and Thimpu over there. And uh, yeah, so far Paro has been beautiful. Chilela Pass, uh, Tiger's Nest, two things you have to do when you're in Paro. And uh, yeah, the next uh, next time you see us, we're going to be in Thimpu. So I'm putting the panniers back on because bike packing. So we got to lug our own luggage from one place to the other. Talking to yourself. To yourself. Just riding out of Paro. Such a beautiful experience. Past four days. It was such a beautiful city. But the guys here say the next few cities are even more beautiful. I can't wait to see what's in store for us. There's so much wind, it's actually stopping me from going downhill. It's crazy. Chain is really f***ing up man. This has to come down. So it has to go to a higher It's still a struggle. What's bothering you, Dalton? The wind! Uh. There's so much wind! Fighting some terrible headwinds. kilometers away from Thimpu but the views are just too beautiful to not stop this is the Thimpu river it goes all the way and it meets up with Paro river they call the confluence the merging of the two rivers we're uh, halfway through onwards to Thimpu from Paro uh, we've covered about 24 kilometers the headwinds are killing it's um, the hills on either side, which is why the roads are in a valley and uh, the views are spectacular. Maybe the best I've ever ridden up till now. I'm gonna pee over there. I don't know if it's permitted. If he gets fined, I don't know him. In Thimpu City! Almost reached our destination, Le Meridian Thimpu. Uh, got greeted with this thing up here in the top top. That's amazing. So we're in uh, the spa area of Le Meridian Thimpu. It was a fun ride, but we're gonna hit this steam room, steam, let the muscles recover, have some really good dinner. And yeah, then we're just gonna chill, relax tonight. And tomorrow morning, we're gonna hit the trails and explore the trails on the mountain bikes. One eternity later. Gaurav, your doctor asked you to uh, cold compress. Have you put your stuff in the fridge? Huh? Freezer? Mama, he's currently out of action, but he's still in action on social media. Uh, our travel, the entire travel is being filmed and uh, however we have not been able to use the drone because rules is a problem yeah, yeah. but yeah we are we, literally filming everything oh, gee what is this man for the pump man what is this 
for the bump. Well, what is it? That's good stuff. Well, what is it? The bump. <laughs> what is this? See that? Are these steroids? Yep. Oh my god, I didn't know you were taking steroids, bro. Are you doping for cycling? Yep. <laughs> Look into the camera. And just like Le Meridian Paro, Le Meridian Timpu was amazing. The staff was courteous, kind, and humble, always willing to help. We enjoyed the steam room, it was just what we needed after that long ride. We didn't get a chance to get into the heated swimming pool, however it was there for us if we needed it. The rooms were amazing, very clean, very very comfortable beds. Much needed when you cycle so much is a good bed to rest in. And overall our experience in Le Meridian, Bhutan was amazing. Once again thank you to everybody at Le Meridian. To go back to what happened at uh, Chilela Pass, where I couldn't really cycle all the way up. We started off at 6.30 in the morning. Um, everyone had a banana, uh, maybe a sandwich, I didn't really eat anything. Uh, I had my electrolytes with me, I had enough water. We had taken off the pannier so that we travel a slightly lighter so we can do the climb. And um, it was amazing. It was going pretty strong. We were cycling continuously, and I wasn't taking any breaks. And we kept going up, 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 up. And at around 10k mark is when I started feeling a little uncomfortable and gasping for air. That moment was a little dicey because when, while I was cycling, I started seeing black spots, and then suddenly it became black for a minute, or less than a minute. I mean, just a few seconds. So I stopped instantly took deep breaths, uh, from what I can understand I think we were at 3,200 3, meters so at the 10k mark I messaged uh, Aditya and on the, basically our group that I'm not feeling too well and Aditya was trying to make his way back down to, to see if he could like come like see if I can sort something out help in like breathing or comfort that matter a little bit but I was panicking a lot I didn't know what to do. Basically, I was just panicking, gasping for air, and I was very disoriented. All I could think about was uh, probably heading back down for more oxygen. Uh, I met Delton on the way down, so I just cycled way down. Downhill was like to basically sit on the cycle and just cruise down. So I met Delton, he took the apple juice from me, he tried talking to me, cracked a few jokes, but I just couldn't see eye to eye with him. And my, I realized my panic mode was going a little too crazy. And then I started freeze, getting freezing, like I was shivering constantly. I wore my jacket and I just cruised down to wherever I felt comfortable. At that moment, I think my hands were shivering too much. I stopped and then stood underneath the sun till I could feel better. I ate a banana, <clears throat> drank a lot of water, and yeah, made it down, made it all the way down. And then I slow and steady. I just couldn't uh, stop and stay at that level for a very long time. When I went to the pit Gaurav to the hospital, the doctor said that we probably just suffocated for lack of air and probably had a panic attack. That's it. So, but the experience was pretty bad. And yeah, keep having flashes of it and I don't want to... <laughs> it's kind of messing with my head a little bit. Now if you're ever in Thimphu, I highly recommend going to Ambient Cafe. You get vegan food at this cafe and I must say the food is very delicious. They don't use any plastic straws, you know, trying to help with the environment. And I just love the vibe of this place. He was out of the bike and his both the feet was putting in the water. <laughs> it was <a> raining. <laughs> Ugly bar, ugly bar. But he finished as second time. He let us the doctor complete it. He was he he was much aged than he may was. Okay.
So we just got our bike serviced. Adi had to get his uh, chain replaced. But anyway, it's all said and done. We got our bikes checked. Everything is lube, service. Everything is proper now. I'm good to go. So we're at the Buddha do Denma statue. It's quite a climb. We were in the car. We didn't cycle this part. We actually, you know, just got our cycles and everything serviced. So, plus the light was going. So we thought we'd just take the car and come back, come up. But yeah, this is a beautiful sight, and it's cold. The Great Buddha Dordenma is a gigantic Buddha statue in the mountains of Bhutan, celebrating the 60th anniversary of the fourth king. The statue houses over 100,000 smaller Buddha statues, each of which, like the Great Buddha Dordenma itself, are made of bronze and gilded in gold. Just before Dorchula Pass, I had to stop here. So many flags, so many colorful flags around here. Man, I don't know which ones I've fed before.